Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Network Troubleshooting Methodology. Today I'm going to be talking about the importance of a methodology, and then I'm going to cover the seven-step troubleshooting methodology recommended by CompTIA. There's a fair amount of ground to cover, not a whole lot of time, so let's go ahead and begin this session. We are going to begin by discussing the importance of a methodology. First up is one of my favorite quotes concerning methodologies, and it is, my methodology is not knowing what I'm doing and making that work for me. That's from Stone Gossard of Pearl Jam, and unfortunately, we don't quite have that kind of liberty when it comes to troubleshooting networks. All networks will require troubleshooting. If you don't know where to start or haven't developed a methodology, you will waste time and resources. The complexity of modern networks means that there is a lot that can go wrong. Without a troubleshooting methodology, your frustration levels and the frustration levels of those you support is going to rise. A systematic troubleshooting methodology can significantly reduce the time required to resolve a problem and close a network trouble ticket, saving both time and other resources. It's time to move on to CompTIA's seven-step troubleshooting methodology. Of course, we're going to begin with step one, which is identify the problem. Gather information. What is actually occurring or not occurring? Is the problem extremely local, as in relegated to your network? Or is the problem occurring in an area that is out of your control? Identify the systems. Remember, the symptoms are not the problem. They just point toward the underlying issue. Most often, when the trouble ticket comes in, it will have some of the symptoms, but it will not have identified the actual problem. Approach multiple problems individually. Handle them one at a time. Question the users. This needs to be done both politely and firmly. Many problems that are reported within a network are the result of the end user needing to be educated or re-educated in proper procedures. At the same time, you also need to remember that most end users don't have your level of technical, of technical knowledge. So be patient, but don't patronize. And finally, when identifying the problem, determine if anything has changed. This also requires a systematic approach, so be very thorough. Step two is to establish a theory of probable cause. Make a list of all of the possible causes of the problem. To develop this list of possible causes, you should consider multiple approaches to the problem from bottom to top and then from top to bottom of the OSI model. That is a great way to approach the problem from multiple directions. Divide your list of possible causes into three ranked sections. They should be not likely, likely, and most likely. This will provide a great place to start. When establishing your theory of probable cause, remember to question the obvious. If the network printer doesn't work, check to be sure that it is turned on. The third step is to test the theory of probable cause. If the theory is confirmed, move on to the next step. If the theory is proven to be incorrect, then reestablish a new theory of probable cause. If you run out of probable causes or the situation worsens, it may be time to escalate the issue up the troubleshooting chain. Once you've confirmed your theory of probable cause, it's on to step four. Establish a plan of action and identify potential effects. Simple problems may require a simple plan, as in, if the network printer doesn't work and the probable cause is that it's not turned on, turn on the network printer. More complex problems will require more complex plans. In some cases, it is a good idea to write the plan out step by step in order to determine the best course of action and to identify any possible repercussions that the resolution to the problem may introduce into the network. Step five is to implement the plan or to escalate the problem. If you have the authority, put your plan into action. 
If you don't have the authority, escalate the problem up the troubleshooting chain, including all facts and determinations when you're escalating the problem. Don't make that next level above you have to recreate everything that you've done. Once you've implemented your plan, it's on to step six. Verify full system functionality. Don't just verify that the original problem has gone away because sometimes a fix will introduce a new issue into the system. If a new issue has occurred, it's time to go back to step one or to escalate the problem. If you have verified full system functionality, this is where you implement preventative measures to keep this problem from reoccurring. And finally, step seven, document findings, actions, and outcomes. Document everything. This will save time if and when the problem reoccurs. Your documentation may lead to new best practices for your organization. It's important to document your missteps as well. It will keep the next technician from making those same missteps that you have made. And this will help to improve your chances of becoming the network support technician rock star in your organization. That concludes this session on network troubleshooting methodology. I talked about the importance of a methodology and then I covered CompTIA's seven step troubleshooting methodology. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I hope to do another one soon.